Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. All right. We're here with poor sound quality um, because our... Uh, decent sound equipment broke so I'm here via cell phone at Buffalo Wild Wings for the 17th edition of Amateur Hour I'm Cody this is Troy hello so we're going to uh, talk about flag football today and in the first segment we're gonna give every team their own compliment sandwich all right so the first what we have here we have compliment sandwiches in the forms of haikus um, because I'm a complete uh, geek. So the first team is... Anyway, first team, by the way, we're Buffalo Wild Wings live on location and recorded. Um, the first team is the Diamondbacks. So the haiku for the Diamondbacks slash compliment sandwich is... Running very fast, but lack continuity, D-backs will be back. So I think that, uh, I think they have a lot of really good athletes, but like I said, they don't, you know, they don't look like they're together a lot of plays. Um, they'll be okay. I think they'll still make the playoffs. Troy, what's your uh, thing on the Diamondbacks? Well, I think they don't have the same team that they had last year, so uh, they're just having... St- like you said, they're going to have to uh, find some continuity. And if they find that like they did last year, they started off like 0-5 last season as well and worked their way into the playoffs. So they probably still have that ability. But is it going to happen this season? Who knows? Okay, the next team up are the BMS Goats, tied for uh, 12th in the league. So, Troy, go ahead. All right. The uh, compliment sandwich for the BMS Goats. Goats show up on time with no athleticism but they play so hard now what, what do you think about that that's as accurate as you could possibly be just right as rain okay. <laughs> <laughs> although i do like how ethan Eskane makes the snaps the ball when he has his arms out and then he claps it's kind of cool and he dresses for the game he's I mean, I have a bunch of accoutrements when I play, but he has colors and leggings and armbands and everything. He he looks like he's about to play a tackle football game. I like that those guys enjoy playing. You know, it's uh, you can tell they put a lot into it. So, tie for number nine. First up is the squad, and the squad's compliment sandwich is David Dam Dixon badly needs a quarterback throwing to Hawkins. And basically, you know, if David had a quarterback that could throw to him and he could just run down the middle of the field and go up and get the ball, they would score just about every play. And uh, if you could just dump it off to Robert Hawkins and let him run with it, you'd also be fine, too, on offense. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. You, you, they've got some really good athletes on that team. They really do. And this, just getting the ball to them in the right situations when they need let, – letting Hawkins run that little slant and get open down the field, he's so quick uh, – and they can make plays. It's just putting it all together. And they got a win at the end of the game last week, uh, this past week. But, uh, you know, they need to get more of those. A little confidence goes a long way in flag football. A little confidence goes a long way in a lot of things. Specifically flag football. Yes. All right. Next up are the expendables. So I'll give you the expendables thing. All right. The expendables. Flag pulling machines can never score enough points, but getting better. Okay, so I wrote these just so everybody knows. So do you agree or disagree or like this? If I read it, I agree, yes. <laughs> yes, they do. They're very good defensively. They know how, well, they're very good at at the point of attack defensively. They know how to pull flags. They just seem to have uh, trouble stopping people and, and being able to uh, hold people off at the end of games. But like I said, they're getting better. One of those teams that have gotten better every year, uh, and they will continue to improve. Yeah, I, I think if you know on defense, they do pull flags really well, but they don't get back. 
you know, they, they get beat by deep plays by every team. So I think that's their – that is their Achilles heel on defense. Their Achilles heel on offense is everything. All right. So they have Achilles heels. Yes, they have Achilles heels. That's what the problem is. Robert Gerard has an Achilles knee. Um, next up is the Punishers. Um, so I have two for the Punishers. Uh, the first one is that with autocorrect, Publishers becomes their name, which makes me giggle. <laughs> I think that that is probably the better one of the two because... Like when you type in Punishers in your phone, it comes up Publishers, and that that's really funny to me. So, you know. <laughs> All right, the other one, the real one, is uh, Athletes Everywhere with no clue of what to do and always intense because those guys are about as intense as anyone I've ever seen, and everybody's pretty fast. They just, uh, they just have no organization at all. Yes, they have what I, what I would consider a very pedestrian offense, uh, or as some people say, a pop gun offense. Um, so they've got some uh, things to improve on. And they're also having trouble getting everybody there every week as well. But when they do, I'm sure they're going to uh, make some plays. Yeah, I'm sure too. Who's next? <laughs> At number seven, tied for seventh right now, the Purple Cobras. The newest team to the league, to the S-E-T-X-F-F-L. They are young and athletic, but they can't stop flag guarding. And two wins are two wins. Well, two wins are two wins. Um, the flag guarding thing, you know, they've never played before. And they're already at a disadvantage because they have the old Soviet Union flags. So... But I think they're getting better. The guy that plays quarterback can throw a ball. Uh, there's a screaming baby in the restaurant now, which is cool. Anyway, it may, it's maybe it's the quarterback from the Purple Cobra's uh, baby. Maybe. Maybe baby? Maybe baby. Anyway. Hey, getting two wins in your first season in the first five weeks of the season, a lot of teams haven't done that before, so that's actually something that you can hold, hang your hat on. Yeah, go talk to the Warriors or Team Ramrod or the BMS Goats. Two wins, two wins or two wins. Um, so anyway, next up, number seven, one of the perennial teams of SETXFFL, the Outlaws. Um, Bruce is always good, but can't win with four players. Sosa, Square, show up. And that's because, well, they've shown up with like four or five people every week now. <laughs> I feel bad for him because Bruce is awesome, and uh, Cami Sosa and Sean <laughs> Abs Square are all great, but they need more players, you know. Yeah, they they lost a tough heartbreaker last week. Uh, get a, the Black Panthers caught a touchdown right at the end of the game, and then on the last play, the Outlaws tried to come back down and score. Got down to about the two yard line and get the flag pulled, and that was the end of the game. And I think if they had their full assortment of players, they win that game pretty easily. So uh, it just shows how much having your real guys there really can help you win a game. Who's next? All right. Uh, once again, tied for seventh is Squad Elite. And for Squad Elite, Gully and Tootie really need defensive help. Each player is quick. Yeah. When Gully shows up, he scores several touchdowns, and, well, he's larger than everyone on the field. By the way, did you know that he was like a Lamar uh, University All-Star, like, um, basketball player? Like, there's news stories of him and everything else. Did you know that? I honestly did not know that. The name is familiar, but I did not know that. Yeah, my dad told me about it. He was on the news forever for a whole bunch of stuff. He was, like, on Lamar when Lamar was really good, and he was their star player. So, um uh, but I think that with, if they would just put Tootie at quarterback and let him do his thing and uh, get some sort of defense going, they would be great. So we'll see if they get that done. All right, who's next here? Let's see. Next on the list at number five is the Trill Black Panthers. And they are the surprise of the league with inconsistent QB, but best receivers. 
they've had the best catches all year, I believe. Um, there's like every game they have has two or three highlights on it, and I love it. Um, but I don't think that they have the best quarterback play I've ever seen. So that's that's my take on the Trail Black Panthers. Yeah, I agree with that. They're going to be a good playoff team, but they've got to find some uh, consistency at quarterback there, and they'll be uh, they'll be all right. Good athletes on that team. <laughs> Next is the herd at the at tied for third. The herd, and we have added great players, but getting very lazy and scoring at will. Uh, it's uh, obvious by the look of our defense. We uh, get lazy out there, and uh, flag pulling and coverage is uh, very lacking. Except for Joel Cole. Yeah, he's he's a very good flag puller. And, and Daniel Norsworth, the two good flag pullers. Um, but we are pretty uh, – we are having some good uh, offensive games, and it's uh, it's fun to actually be able to score points <laughs> as we uh, – and throw the ball deep and get the ball down the field. That's actually fun to watch. Yeah, James Morrison and Carl Lameth, big additions for us. Carl and James, we love you both mutually, although mutually is not the correct word. I like you, but I love you, James Morrison. I love you, Carl Lambeth. All right. <laughs> so the next team at uh, tie for number three is the 409 boys. For them, experience helps while dissension holds them back. Clint moves them forward. So I noticed that, you know, JC's been playing quarterback for them and Patrick shows up um, periodically or inconsistently which are one you want to use. They just they just have to stay together, you know. They all know how to play football really well. Um, they just can't fall apart in the middle of a game on a quarterback controversy. Yeah, I mean they're one they're probably the most experienced team out there, but having, you know, not enough people show up, the right people show up, it's hard to uh, be consistent and uh I, I, I'd hate to see them when they get all their guys for the playoffs. That's what's going to scare me right there. Who's next? The tie for first place, the Jack Boys. Here we go. Great hell, the athletes that never show up on time and dominate all. Yes. <laughs> I swear they can get the ball to anybody on the field. They can score a touchdown. It's so frustrating if you're playing against them. Um, and also, they show up 15 to 30 minutes late every single day. No matter what time the game is. Yes, so, yeah, they're awesome, though. They know how to play the game. Liberty's still playing, so they're awesome. And for the last one, also tied at number one with an unblemished record, the Showstoppers. For them, QBs everywhere aren't as good as Jake Dilt's Cun picks sure do help because everybody on that team can throw the football apparently but Jake Dilt throws the very best and Cunningham will intercept anybody's pass any day when he's playing defense because you can't really intercept passes when you're on offense so yes but he, but he can throw with interceptions on offense so that does happen yeah he's the leader in interceptions on both sides um, so anyway, that's our compliment sandwich segment. Um, we would look forward to hearing any of your compliment sandwiches you'd like to put in the comments of this because all four of you listen to this and we really appreciate it. So uh, we'll go to the next segment where we'll talk about the Astros and whatever else is going on. Troy, anything else? Yes. All right. Stay tuned. <laughs> It's not segment we're going to talk about the Astros winning their very first World Series and uh, Troy had actually written a, uh, a piece on our blog it's called uncensored 
I encourage you all to read it. Just go to the website and click on Uncensored, and you'll find all the blogs, including the last one that he wrote. So to start off the segment, I'm going to just let Troy read his blog. So here it goes. Uh, well, I entitled this Astros World Series Victory and My Dad. Uh, it made me, after watching them win, it made me think a lot about my dad, who has been uh, dead for over 11 years now, and uh, how he loved baseball and the Astros. And so I wrote this piece, and uh, it just made me feel you know, closer to him, and it made me feel good just to see all this. So here we go. Uh, the Astros won the 2017 World Series, something I didn't think I would ever see in my life. The last time they were in the World Series was 2005 and got swept by the White Sox. That was the last baseball season my dad got to watch. He passed away in 2006, a few months after the Astros lost in 2005. He loved baseball and was a huge Astros fan. He had such great knowledge of the game and all the ins and outs. I tried to see the game like he did and enjoy every little nuance of the game. I learned how to play sports from him, but I also got my intensity from him, which is off-putting to most, but that's one thing that he passed down to me, and I'm not ashamed of it. It keeps him close to me. He was my biggest critic and my biggest fan. He was harder on me than every other player he coached, plus he was harder on me than any other coach ever was on me. He also praised me more than anyone else. He would tell me I was the best player on the field every game, but he would let me know every mistake I made. It was a weird dichotomy, constant compliment sandwiches. When I went off to college to play football and run track, he, he cried when my parents dropped me off. It was the first time I'd ever seen him cry. But he also came to every game I played and every track meet I ran, no matter how far away it was. Seriously, he drove all the way to Memphis, Tennessee to watch me run the 400 meter dash. The race took less than 50 seconds and the man wanted to be there for it. Our sports connection was so important to him and me. We played softball together for years as well. We always had intense arguments during games, but it was so much fun. We played together until he got sick, and it, which ended his career. Um, I know he would still be playing today if he was around. I miss that so much. Watching the World Series this year and watching my wife enjoy every second of it, I couldn't help but think of how he'd be enjoying watching his favorite team win the World Series. My wife never got to meet my dad. They would have loved each other and loved talking Astros. We would have watched every pitch together. I know we would have cried just like we did. The Astros didn't win just for themselves or for the hurricane ravaged areas of Houston and Southeast Texas. They won it for all those people that have watched throughout the years, gone to the games at the Astrodome and Minute Maid Park. But most importantly, in my mind, they won for my dad. Well, that's great, and I thought it was awesome. Uh, you know, I haven't watched baseball in years, mainly because it's boring. Um, also, because I feel like it might be a communist plot. But uh, I actually did watch the World Series. I watched every game, every friggin' pitch, um, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute of it. And if baseball could give me more of that, I'd like baseball. But unfortunately, there's that 162 game prelude that I'm going to have to sit through to get to whatever I care about. And then generally, whatever I, you know, the playoffs are going to have a bunch of people I don't care about. So, But I thought about you when I was watching football with uh, Colin, my son, on Sunday. Because he's a big New York Giants fan. So we're watching the Giants get beat by whatever team they're getting beat by this week. And every play, Colin's like, you know, yelling and like, the Giants are terrible or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I kind of hope he remembers this when he gets older that, you know, we sat there and watched his team. We watched my team. He rooted against my team. And I at least attempted to console him while his team was losing because my team's better than his team. So, you know, it made me think about you. Though. It's like those are the things that you're going to remember, like whenever you're, uh, whenever you're an adult about your parents. Cause I, that's what I remember about my dad when I was a kid is that we watched Cowboys together and you know, live and die on every call. It's pretty cool. So I liked your article. I thought it was great. And it, well, it made me slightly misty eyed. So well, go ahead. Here's your time for the Astros. Well, just with them winning the World Series, it's their first one in 56 years of playing. It's the first World Series in the state of Texas. It's amazing that it's been this long for someone to win a World Series in this area when 
there have been so many great players and teams, and this is such an area known for, you know, big baseball and pitchers. <laughs> it just shows how hard it is to win a championship, not just for the Astros, but just for any team in general. What, what it takes to win a championship and, and to keep that going throughout your uh, tenure. Uh, you can have the best players. It doesn't mean you're going to have the best team. And it showed that these guys on the Astros this year were such a, a fun team to be around. They love being around each other. You can tell they cared for each other. Uh, and they found things that brought them together and made them each month just get better and better and better, And which culminates into winning a, a world championship. Uh, and that just goes with every sport. You've got to like who you're playing with, and you've got to really care for the person next to you. And it just shows how hard – you know, no matter how good you are, if you have the right combination, you can win a championship, and it just takes all that coming together. And just because you win one doesn't mean you're going to keep winning. So that's the thing. You've got to have the right combination, and the Astros had that. And uh, it was just fun to watch. I had a uh, – I just, it was so fun for me. I enjoyed every every bit of it. The, when they were losing, I was so upset. When they won, it was amazing. And then actually winning the whole thing was – Something I just didn't think I'd ever see. I really, I just couldn't put it into words. It's one of those things you just you see it and you don't believe it, and it happens, and you, you don't even know your emotions. You don't even know how to explain it. Well, let's not forget the very best thing the Astros did in the whole thing. Uh, they ended the baseball season. That was the best thing that they did, and I'm so happy for them. And uh, for all you guys that, you know, listen to this and you think about spending time with your kids and watching football or watching baseball or whatever other sport you want to watch you know when i see jc bring his son out to play flag football on sundays when i see uh, you know all those like brian dennison who plays on our team brought his kid out there last sunday i see these little kids coming out there and playing football asking about hey did you see my dad do this did you see my dad do that when they're playing it's really cool you know, and I'm so glad to see so many good parents, you know, bringing their kids out and having a good time and making them a part of things. So I guess I just want to tell everybody, watch sports with your kids or at the least make sure they're not uh, malnourished. So, um, yeah, that's about all I have. on. you have anything else? No, just sports, I think, is the one thing of everything that brings people together. Politics are so polarizing nowadays. Even I mean, everything is. Everything's polarizing. They want you to be opposite on everything. But sports are the one thing that bring people together. And it's just amazing to see how much fun you can have with family and friends just watching sports. Not just playing, but watching and talking about it. And I think that's what, uh, if people would look more towards that, you'd see that it's really something that keeps us uh keeps us sane i think sports do it really does because so much can drive you insane sports is the one constant that we have in our lives so uh take advantage of sports when you get a chance to all right thanks for listening have a fine day